gonna like having this new actuary channel. You guys have already given me a few great ideas on some like helpful actuarial content, high school courses for aspiring actuaries, things I have to sacrifice in order to become an actuary. Those are videos that I think I'm gonna make in the near future. But today I thought I would share my actuarial journey. I thought I'd tell you guys how I went from never having heard the word actuary to being an actuary at 25. So I guess it all started back in like the 10th or 11th grade when I went to my guidance counselor saying, I don't know what I wanna do after high school. He gave me an interest test and I scored high in math. Based off of that, he said, maybe you should look into actuarial mathematics. I remember him like writing it down on a piece of paper and I took it and I looked it up and I said, hmm, maybe this would be interesting. Not sure. I don't know. I grew up in Quebec, so between high school and university, there is a two-year college-like program called CGEP. And when I was in CGEP, I was still sort of tossing back, do I want to be an engineer like my dad? Do I want to be an actuary? Is there something else that I'd be better at doing? Like, I wasn't really sure. So I went to their career counseling center, and they gave me a couple tests to do. I did a career interest test and a career personality test. And I got back the results of the career interest test, and the number one career was actuary. So I was like, whoa. I was already thinking of this. That's convenient. Then I got the career personality test, which said I should be an engineer. And I said, oh, that's something I'm also thinking about. So I was back to actuary engineer, actuary engineer. Maybe there's something else in the middle that I don't know about, but actuary engineer. And finally, I ended up going with actuary for a couple of like, weird superficial reasons. One, because my dad's an engineer and I didn't want everyone going around being like, oh, you're following your father's footsteps, how adorable. And two, I really didn't like writing lab reports and I thought, engineers write a lot of lab reports. Actuaries don't write any lab reports, so that's why I went into it. In September 2011, I started my degree I have a Bachelor of Science with a specialization in actuarial mathematics. I was a member of the Institute of Cooperative Education, which basically meant that over the course of my degree, I had to do four internships. So I was doing schoolwork, schoolwork, schoolwork. I didn't get any, you know, summer vacation. And just as a little tip to you guys, even if you don't have a co-op program at your school, even if there's no formal work study set up, try to find internships. It might be hard in your first year, my first year, I could not find an actuarial internship, so I just did general business work. But being able to do internships in the field are so valuable because you A, get experience, B, get your foot in the door, C, it helps you see what you're actually gonna be doing in the future and maybe you decide, oh, this is what being an actuary is? I don't like that at all. So if you can, <laughs> I recommend it. I wrote my first actuarial exam in February 2012. I was 20 years old. I remember going to Florida over Christmas break before I wrote FM, and I was lying on the beach with my study manual, my financial calculator, doing my little, you know, study calculations and whatnot, and a family friend came up to me and he's like, all the other kids are lying around playing on your phone and you're playing on your financial calculator. Yes, I was. I know a lot of actuaries who treat like PNFM as if they were so easy and they're like, oh, I studied two weeks for them. Me, I studied like two, three months for them. I was not about to fail, or at least I was gonna give my best effort in order to pass. I was gonna try, and I did. I wrote my exams at a rate of two exams per year, except for in 2015 when I decided to take a sitting off and write two modules instead. Summer 2012, I had my first internship, which was non-actuarial, but I still learned about sort of how it works to work in an office. I'm really good at sentences. I remember someone asking me to send an email to someone and I asked them like, do I have to address them as Mr. So-and-so or can I use their first name? Like I did not know how offices worked. I didn't know what the level of formality, formalness needed to be. So I think that was just a really good like opening up moment. I also remember walking into my boss's office just wanting to talk about work and he'd be like, whoa, we haven't spoken today, like, hi, how are you? I also remember him thanking me for a lot of the work that I did. I just wasn't expecting this level of kindness, I guess. Like, I guess I thought work would be more do, 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 do. And so it put the seed in my head of small talk is important. So even though I didn't get any actuarial experience, I think that experience was very formative. My first actuarial internship was in January 2013, and it's actually for the company that I work for now, but in the Montreal office. That was an incredibly overwhelming experience because one, I was working in French and my French was passable, but I not as strong as I wanted it to be. I also remember first day, all day SAS training, second day, code this in SAS, and I would sit there going, 
I have no idea what to do and someone would sit with me for like an hour explain what to do and then I take three hours to do something that would take me five minutes now like I was very overwhelmed and that was a very new experience for me because I was used to being you know best in the class and so good at everything and then here I come and I know nothing so it was very humbling it was my first time being in an environment around a bunch of actuaries and it was very motivating like I felt that everyone was up here and I was like here and to get there I really had to push myself whereas in school I was always at par with the best I didn't have to push myself but I knew that in an environment with actuaries I was gonna have to step it up if I wanted to shine and y'all know I want to shine in September 2013, I did my third internship, second actuarial, in a health and benefits consulting. And it was at that point when I came to realize that consulting was not for me. If you're interested, I can make a whole video about why I don't think it was for me. The aha moment really came when I had a conversation with someone there, and she explained to me why consulting was for her, and I said, yeah. No, that actually isn't for me. But I'm glad that I tried it, and maybe one day it will be for me, but right now, right now I'm happy. <laughs> in May 2014, I did a second internship with the company that I work for now, except in the Toronto office. It was at that point where I made the decision to go into PNC and become a CAS actuary, PNC being property and casualty. Car, home, business insurance, as opposed to life, health, pensions. They were really kind to me and they said, we'll make you a full-time offer in either Montreal or Toronto, whatever city you want. And I went back and forth about a million times until I finally decided to start full-time in Montreal. I wasn't ready to move at the time. Uh, obviously now I am ready to move since I'm working for that company in Toronto. So I like to jump between Montreal, Toronto, Montreal, Toronto. Uh, maybe next I'll jump over to Vancouver. Probably not, but maybe. Probably not. Finished all my courses in December 2014. Took two months off to go traveling through Australia and New Zealand. Oh, oh my gosh. If I can recommend something to you guys, it's travel. Travel, travel, travel. Between when you graduate and when you start working because traveling is ballin'. Started working full time in the Montreal office in March 2015 in a non-traditional actuarial role. But it was kind of fun because we were doing things like predictive modeling and I built a few GLMs and I learned about how the business worked and it was a very eye-opening and interesting experience. Interesting? I don't know what the best word is. Educational? I also just am really lucky in that I love my Montreal coworkers. Like they're so amazing and I miss them so much. Like we have an instant messenger at work and I just message them all the time being like, I miss you guys. What's happening? Keep me up to date with the gossip. Finished all my requirements to become an ACAS by the end of 2015. Got my official ACAS in 2016 where I was honored in Seattle. And in May of 2017, I wrote and passed my final actuarial exam. So now I can call myself a fellow of the Casualty Actuarial Society at 25. If you guys weren't jotting down all my dates, first exam, February 2012. Final exam, May 2017. So I did all my exams in like a little over five years. Passed all of them on the first try, which is rare and I impress myself and um, like pat me on the back. I know it's braggy, but I'm proud of me. For my last exam, I actually made a bet with a coworker that I would fail and I lost the bet. So I had to buy him dinner. With every exam, I kept going to my coworkers being like, this is the one, I'm due for a failure, I'm gonna fail. And they would go, Michelle, you're not gonna fail. And I told them, I said, when I fail, I'm gonna shove it in your face and I'm gonna be like, this is what you get for believing in me. See, I am a failure. But I never had that moment. The best of problems, I guess. So here I am, working in Toronto, full time for two and a half years. I'm actually switching teams again in like two weeks. Just a reshuffle of positions. I'm taking a little bit of a break from all the studying formal education, so I'm not taking any online courses right now, but eventually I'm gonna look into it. Being a fellow of the Casualty Actuarial Society, it's nice. Not having to study for exams, so much nicer. Fellow, good, not studying. Excellent. Let me know where you are in your actuarial journey in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to see more of my face. I have so many actuarial videos that I want to make for you guys. I love you. Thank you for calling. I'll see you later. Peace.